Jody and Ferran Mom says, remarks of medics in background on phone call sickens her. Very pleasant good morning ladies and gentlemen. Welcome once again to the People's Forum of Industries. Yes, we are on the subject of Julian Ferran. The world must have heard of this beautiful young girl, 23 years old, who actually lost her life on the hospital floor. Stay tuned for the sickening remarks the mother said she heard on the phone, but refused. To say. There's a surprising revelation as investigation continue into the controversial death of Julian Ferran. The newspapers now learned that nearly 24 hours before the first time mother died of apparent heart failure, a senior medical official at Andrews Memorial Hospital had reached out to a senior official in the Ministry of Health and Wellness for help in resolving issues related to her transfer to a public health care facility. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry, Dustin Bryan, yesterday he confirmed that amid the crisis they were in the management of Andrews Memorial Hospital, I telephoned him around 11.30 p.m. on April 23rd to see if he could facilitate the engagement with Victoria Jubilee Hospital. He acknowledged that the late night call was related to the transfer of the patient because of the issues Andrews Memorial was faced with, but declined to go into details of the talk, citing the ongoing criminal and administrative probes into the matter. Because of the challenges that were being faced by the hospital, Andrews, and their inability to manage the patient and their request for the support of the government to transfer the patient to a public facility, Brian said, in explaining why the hospital had reached out to him. However, the permanent secretary insisted that his intervention was limited to Victoria Jubilee Hospital and advised to a senior medical officer there to follow the protocols for the transfer of the patient. He, the SMO, said he would have dealt with the matter and you know from the outcome in the public domain, the hospital, Victoria Jubilee, did not have the ability to receive the patient. As per protocol, contact was made with the Spanish Town Hospital. Brian disclosed while making it clear that he played no role in Julian's transfer to Spanish Town Hospital. At the same time, the health official denied reports that he was asked to facilitate Julian's transfer to the University Hospital of the West Indies and made claims the hospital had refused to accept her. I have no authority to give instruction to them, UHWI and VJH administratively. Further, I have no authority to give clinical instructions. I can only provide facilitation, the permanent secretary explained. So when I was contacted by Andrews Memorial, it was to facilitate the transfer of the patient to the Victoria Jubilee Hospital. I specifically told the management at Andrews that I would speak to the VJH hospital management and based on that, the hospital management would work with the clinical team to see what would happen. Brian insisted. Pressed on the issue, Brian said he did not know why his interaction with Andrews Memorial 
would need to be made public. When contacted, Caroline Hay, attorney for Andrews Memorial, declined to discuss the issues, raising the telephone conversation between your client and the permanent secretary because of the ongoing investigation, but said the management of the hospital was willing to speak publicly on the incident and has something very important to say. She also gave the assurance that Andrews Memorial is cooperating with anybody who has the authority to ask questions and we want to see the natural outcome of reasonable and prudent investigations. They are following my advice. I am accepting responsibility for why they are not speaking because I'm telling them that they are in the middle of investigation from every corner, she said. Jodian was admitted to the privately operated Andrews Memorial on April 23rd, 2020 for delivery. According to reports, a decision was taken for her to be transported to a public hospital after it was perceived that she was displaying symptoms of the dreaded coronavirus. She reportedly died on the floor in an extensive care unit at UHWI shortly after 10 p.m. on April 24th. This was nearly six hours after she gave birth to daughter Peyton Grace. The 23-year-old was admitted to the private operated Andrews Memorial for delivery. Jodian's heartbroken mother, Portia Green Harden, appears surprised by the latest information. I've never heard that before, she told the newspaper during an interview on Friday. Green Heart disclosed that she was on the phone with her other daughter, Shanice, who was with Jodian at Andrews Memorial Hospital on April 23rd. She said she overheard some of the stuff that was being said in the background by medical personnel who were denying my daughter of care. Greenheart declined to divulge what she overheard, but was adamant that there was discrimination because of her daughter's perceived COVID-19 status. It sickens me to my stomach. It's terrible. And I must tell you that these are some of the things that resonate with me. According to her account, Jodian was placed in isolation and that drove her into a panic attack that had her hyperventilating. It was the treatment, the behavior of the medical personnel that scared her because of now she didn't know what was going to happen to her. I was on the other end of the phone screaming for somebody to listen, she said. Greenheart said she and her late daughter were best friends and recounted how they would chat on the phone several times a day. It was her first pregnancy and she would talk to me about every little feeling. The mother of two also recalled a conversation she had with Jodian a week before she died. She, Jodian, said, Mommy, you know me think she, Peyton Grace, is going to be a doctor? Green Arton said. She believes the lasting tribute to Jodian would be a new legislation that protects other women from meeting a similar fate as her daughter. I'm on a quest for justice, and with justice comes the truth. What I would love to see that there is a law in place that would protect women, young women like Julianne Green Arton said. What a very powerful, powerful thing to say from a mother who have lost a child. Normally it is children burying parents and not parents burying your children. My heart goes out to you, Miss Harden. I understand the pain that you are, that you're going through at this particular time. I stand in solidarity with you. I will give the family as much spiritual support as I possibly can. And I'll tell you this, I will never ever stop talking about this case until justice is served. We know no amount of money can bring back Jody and Farrah. We understand that. But her daughter, Peyton Grace, must be in a position so she can grow up like she had her mother, even though that is impossible. But she must not be in want of anything. Kenton Senior, her father, is doing a remarkable job. 
a beautiful job showcasing love for his wonderful daughter, Clayton Grace. Ladies and gentlemen, I stand in solidarity with this one. I will continue to report and report and report until true justice is served for Julianne. Thank you so much for watching. Please have a safe day. Thank you.